Hello and welcome everyone. This is Andrew and Steve with Invent Right TV, another show. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice snow, Stephen. Wow, that's so beautiful. Can you see that? Can everybody nice. see okay. that? Okay, so we're not going to do a show. Steve, just be quiet. Make sure to get out of the way. We're just going to sit and watch the snow. Put a little background music. It'd be nice. Shh, quiet. <laughs> so Andrew, Andrew, that's impossible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, even more so for me. I'll, I'll admit that. So, um, as usual, you're not going to tell me what we're doing for the show, so go ahead. Well, it's not usual. You don't always do that to me, but you do it a lot. No, but I... I like to do it to you. So, <laughs> uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody that's watching our YouTube video, making comments. If we can help you, let us know. Send those comments in. Give us a thumbs up and share it with other people that could be helpful. We're finding uh, people are moving forward. They're taking action. It's working. So keep uh, keep listening. Uh, one of our listeners had asked a, a really pretty interesting question. Uh, we're always talking about simple ideas, and he wanted to know about the packaging industry because he's heard me talk a little bit about it. And he wanted to talk about not so much the packaging, but also consumables. Mm -hmm. Give an example of a consumable. Razor blades. Okay. Napkins. Diapers. Tampons, diapers. Okay. Okay. And, and, Andrew, you've, you've talked about this before. Those industries are not the easiest industries to break into. Why is that? Oh, and you, you brought up some points, too. I'll let you bring up the points about manufacturing. But um, quite often, there's very few companies. Like in Razor Blades, there's only three companies. You know, I don't like those numbers. Not 30. Yes, <laughs> three companies. Right. And they're really, really, really big. And, and um, they wear patents like badges. I mean, look at Gillette and some of these companies. So that, to me, is not an ideal project. It's pretty much don't work on it kind of project. Um, now, not, sometimes it's not three. It could be 10 or 12. But, Stephen, why don't you talk about, okay. like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inventor, okay? Okay, I'm going to play the inventor here. Stephen, I got this great idea. Oh, my God. It's for diapers. <laughs> it's for a new closure for diapers. And it, this, um, you know how many diapers they sell? I know. And they just need to make this a few changes, a few changes. I think I think I can make millions off of this. Here, here's the problem. Um, and Andrew's right. When there's only so many, that's always difficult. But more than that, the equipment that they have built to produce those bazillion quantities run extremely fast. And that technology has been around for a long time. Good. I can make more money that way quicker. I know, but <laughs> usually when you add a few bells and whistles, right? Yeah. It interrupts their production line. Mm -hmm. It's going to slow it down. It's going to add more cost. Well, they talk about the cost. You always talk about the cost. Yeah, they. Yeah, a lot of those types of um, commodities, uh, consumables, are pretty price sensitive, right? And because uh, it impacts a lot of facilities, usually not just one, and because they run so fast and they're so efficient, whenever you do anything to add cost or slow it down, it's money. So most inventors Mul are out of- Multiplied by the insane volume they do, you know, increasing the cost of a diaper by five cents might cost them half They're gonna hate dollars. you. They're yeah. gonna hate you. Now, if you could, add value by lowering the cost or keeping the cost the same, they will love you. Okay. okay, but most people that don't have that type of expertise in manufacturing really are at a big, big disadvantage. Which is not true for most projects our students work on. Is this true for these high volume disposables that sell bazillions of units. Yeah, that's why I, I like this question because basically it doesn't apply to 95 it was, it was, of- It was your own question. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have to do with 95% like of any of the people we work with. Right. But we hear it all the time. But we, we know how to work on these types of projects and we have an additional set of rules because you have experience with your spin well, label, with your packaging product. Yeah, I, I've been in that industry 20 years. Whenever we have a student that has a packaging idea, 
it always lands in my lap. I'm always the coach for that particular student because Don't. of I know the people, I've got connections, I understand manufacturing, but I always try to talk them out of it at first. Because of the, you know how difficult it is. Well, I just tell them, look, having that be your first product to work on, it's gonna take longer than you want it to be. Number one, it's just gonna take longer. You need to be very persistent. You need to be willing to, to um, uh, work on it, make some changes, be flexible, and be in for the long haul. It's not a simple idea, right? It's what I call a treasure chest project. And whenever we have somebody like that, we're gonna, it's gonna drag, like the long haul. I always tell those people, always, because you're gonna get up and running, you're gonna be playing a waiting game, a lot of points, if you can figure out the earlier. Yeah, but Andrew, here, here, here's the other thing though. We have a couple students that um, I told them that don't, and they still said, I'm doing it. And it's worked out fine, it's taken them longer. Right, but a lot, a lot longer. But their product's going to hit the market. They did figure it out. I was able to bring in certain people that I know. They worked with. They figured, they found a smaller customer. So it's going to work. It's just that instead of taking you know x amount of months, it's took it's going to take over a year. But here's the big thing: the volumes are huge. Yeah. And the money is fantastic. So, but it's not for everybody. And definitely, if you don't have someone that can help you understand manufacturing. I wouldn't recommend it at all. I think you're 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 going down a bad road. You have so, to have a much thicker skin. So that and the the other thing um, I don't want to get into, it, but I want to talk about those three companies, right? Because they're attitude. I want to say real quick: when there's only three companies, they don't need us. They keep us out. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they they, control the market. They're not innovators; they're market takers. So they don't have to do anything innovative when they see something. Let some small company work on it develop it, then they come and buy it, you're gone. So it's not really inventor friendly. They say they might be, but you guys, trust me, those big guys, never. They're market takers, not market innovators. So uh, we won't say who they are because we kind of know who all those guys are over the years, but anyway. Yep. Okay, good all stuff, right. good stuff. So if you like the show, down below give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, tell people about the show, write some comments, we love, we love to hear from you guys. And we'll catch up with you on another inventright.com TV show. See you. Bye-bye.